this morning I received a message from someone who wanted to know if I believe that Christians should not be taking medication. And they said to me that their spouse takes a certain medication because they had a kidney replacement. This is a really difficult question for me, not because it doesn't have a very clear answer. It's difficult for me because I feel for each and every one of you who are reconciling this question, who are taking a look at what is written in scripture, are considering the things that I'm saying to you, but you have certain situations. You have situations with loved ones. You have situations with yourself. I want to remind you as well that when God drew me to himself, I was dying. When he told me to throw out my supplements and medications, I was dying. So it was difficult for me as well because I was concerned about my daughter. I can't really say that at that point that I was all that concerned about myself. I was pretty tired of being alive. But I was taking those medications and supplements and trying to get better so that I could be here with her. And he healed me from all of it, from the emotional stuff to the physical stuff. He left me a thorn, but he let me know that it's a thorn. He built understanding and purpose and a testimony in me. But you can't make decisions through me. You can't come to believe through me. You have to believe through him. So all I can do is share my testimony. I can share with you what's written in the word. And if you are hearing me speak on the word, my testimony means something. And the Holy Spirit is prompting you to think about the things that I'm saying. Then you got to bring it back to God and you, you got to ask him, I'm not God. I can tell you what I believe, but I will not tell you what you need to do because you have to receive that from him alone. I do not believe that people of God should be taking medications, having procedures, doing anything with a field that denies him, a field that replaced his word through philosophers that implemented witchcraft, breaking open the temple of God, pouring medications into people, leading them into idolatry. I don't believe that God uses that. A field that says that there's no creator fundamentally says that there is no Christ. And John said that anyone who denies Christ is the Antichrist. Will God then use a field that has the spirit of the Antichrist that declares that there is no creator and no Christ and everything that bears out of that field is based on that understanding? Even if you tried to add, try to add Christianity to it, which is crazy, right? That's exactly what the prostitutes are doing. That's exactly what the harlot does and the prostitutes that bore out of her. They start out with the premise of, Christ, of, of Christ, even though it's a false Christ, a version that they prefer. And then they start adding pagan things and trying to combine Christianity with the world. But Christ says, you cannot do that. You have to choose between the world and him. Friendship with the world is enmity to Christ. He requires us to be single-minded. He requires us to decide whether we're hot or cold. We can't be lukewarm and we can't be double-minded. So let me tell you what he did with me. And perhaps this might help you to have some understanding of what you need to bring to him, what you need to ask him about. So again, all I can do is share my experience and my testimony. And my experience and my testimony is that God healed seven, he healed me from seven years of debilitating chronic illness and emotional issues that I'd had, you know, really since my childhood as a result of the abuse that I sustained. And he did it without medications telling me to throw everything out even when I had not healed. He contended with me regarding my sin. There was a direct correlation between my symptom reduction or total remission and whatever it was that he was teaching me, me learning the lesson. And so he taught me that the sooner that I learned the lesson, the sooner that I understand, the sooner I examine myself on what he's raising up in me, the sooner those symptoms will remit and that I have to go as deep as I can go. I cannot do that work superficially.
He spoke with me regarding his anger towards the churches, science, universities, which I now understand to be all included within Babylon. So this is what, three years later that he's putting that full picture to me, helping me understand that these things are Babylon. We need to come out of them and they need to come out of us. It does not matter if a scientific field claims to be Christian. I went to a Christian university that claimed to be teaching us based on biblical instruction, and it couldn't be further from the truth. You know who their God was? Science. Their God was science, and they threw in a few scriptures and had you consider some sprinkling, some cherry picking of scripture. None of that stood on biblical truth. And if those teachers truly knew God, they would know that. They would know that you cannot combine the enemy of God with him. You cannot combine a field that denies him with him. It's lunacy. And the authority that they spoke on was science. God was an afterthought. If you are speaking on God's truth, there is no way to reconcile the world with God. But so many people in counterfeit churches, in fields like this, Christian therapy, Christian medicine, whatever, what they are doing is trying to combine God with what they prefer. They don't prefer him. They're combining him because they want the benefits of being associated with him and they will not be saved. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not eat with you in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? They are not practicing in the name. They're saying the name. They're not in the name. The other thing that I ask you to consider is that he didn't use these things when he was here. Not once did he use a medication, a procedure, a surgery, drawing out your blood, mixing blood, giving you tinctures and herbs. All of these things were considered to be idolatry. He healed people and that was it. He's capable of that. And he counseled them to repent and sin no more, which means when you're repenting, you have to return to God. So he was sharing the same message that he has always shared in the word, which is return to me and I will heal you. Return to me and I will restore you. Return to me and I will return to you. He says that he does not yield his praise or his glory to idols. If he doesn't do that, do you think that he would then take it a step further in the direction he says he doesn't go to then yield his praise and glory to a field that fundamentally rejects him and leads others to do the same? A field of people who refer to themselves, who exalt themselves as heroes, healers, gods. You know, when I was very sick and towards the end, just before the father drew me to the son, I had started seeing a woman. I've talked with you about this before. She claimed to be practicing a spiritual medicine. By that time, I'd been in 20, almost 30 years of therapy I had gone through Western medicine, Eastern medicine, naturopathy, homeopathy, energy medicine, acupuncture, which is a form of energy medicine. And so when this woman started speaking about Jesus Christ and saying, this is spiritual medicine, I thought, okay, maybe that's what God wants me to do. She used the verbal name, Jesus Christ. Don't mistake that for using the actual name. Counterfeit churches also use the verbal name and they are not preaching the true Christ. They are not teaching others the same covenant that he came here to extend. And I remember that when I received, so she claimed to be doing vibrational homeopathy. She would send out a saliva sample and get all of these results. And then she would order the medication. And when I received the medication, she told me how to take it. And then she told me, what I do is I just put those little tinctures in my purse and then I hold on to them. I hold them in my hand to absorb the vibrations. 
I mean, really, if this sounds stupid to you, it's because it is. It's crazy what we will believe, and it's crazy what we refuse to believe. Did these things make us? Did this field make us, create us, keep this machine going? Does it have the power to give life, to remove life, to take that breath out of us or to put it in, to take that spirit out of us or put it in? Why are we believing in this over what he has said, over what he established so many years ago so that we would know who he was and where our healing comes, where healing can be found, and what is required of us in order to be healed. He told us, and I'll tell you what happened. He laid that truth down, and he said, now love my truth, and when you see these things happening, you'll know that you have strayed. Return to me, and I'll heal you. When you see that you've gone into captivity, you need to take a look at your sins and the sins of your ancestors, confess them to me, and I will restore you. And you know what mankind did? They wanted to be like the world. They started adapting what the world does. They wanted control. They wanted power. Even though it's false power, even though God contended with him when Ahaziah fell through the lattice and he told his people to go and consult with Beelzebub whether he would live or die, God made him an example for our sake. And Elijah said to the people, is it because there's no God in Ekron that you are going to consult with Beelzebub as to whether Ahaziah will live or die? Go back and tell Ahaziah he will surely die because he has done this. What do we do? Do we also consult with someone else as to whether we will live or die? Do we not also take their medications break down God's temple, and then give them credit for healing us? Have they healed us? Because the only thing I ever experienced, I'll tell you what my experience as I look back now, is you get a flu or you get some sort of illness, you go to the doctor and you get medication, and that flu or illness that would have gone away on its own, or eventually when you actually return to God, rest in him, it would have gone away. And now instead of saying, God is in control of whether I get sick, God is in control of everything. He's sovereign. And so I know that if I return to him and I let him contend with me, that he's going to heal me. But no, we say that it was the medication that healed us. Praise God. Is that praising God? Yielding our praise and glory to idols and then praising God, saying that we praise him. God doesn't need you to work, to engage in the work of your own hands. And then as an afterthought, give him the glory because truly it's not giving him the glory. And one thing that I will tell you is that since I, since he healed me, I have gotten an illness about a handful of times in the last three years. I had COVID a couple of times maybe a cold here or there. I mean, less than a handful of times, it seems. Every single time he contended with me, every single time that I learned the lesson, it remitted. I did not get anything as bad as I've heard other people getting it. It was bearable. It was kind of like a flu, a short-term flu in my case. How does that even make sense if I was on the brink of death? How does it make sense if I supposedly needed so many medications and, and uh, IVs in order to stay alive? How does that even make sense? I should have been dead faster than anybody. He has given me symptoms when I've done certain things. Like, for example, I've talked about on this channel that I have that I have a cough. He uses the cough. It's not going anywhere. He's already let me know that. He uses it. When I start doing things that I'm not supposed to be doing and he's pulling me in and contending with me for stepping away from him, he'll start increasing my cough and then I know, all right, this isn't my normal thing. He's speaking to me. Is it not his will to use that? Does he not get to use that? I mean, I don't get to argue with him about my comfort or say, you know what, if you're not going to make this go away, I'll make it go away. By the way, I did that. 
it was before I knew him, but I did it. I took many medications and steroids. I had my tonsils and adenoids removed. I did all kinds of things to make that cough go away. And even though I did it ignorantly, think you know, like all of us, we all go to medicine if we're sick, don't we? At least that's what I used to do. Even though I did it ignorantly, I received a lashing because he says if you do it knowingly, you sin knowingly, you're going to receive a large lashing. If you sin ignorantly, you'll receive a small lashing. It did not make me better. It made me worse. Now I don't have any line of defense, first line of defense. All of that just goes right into my chest. Could God heal it if he wanted to? Yeah, he could make it go away. He made other things go away. He did not make this go away because he's using it and he has every right to do that. Now I say all of this to you and I say it with confidence because I have full confidence in what God has done and what he has taught me regarding illness, affliction, thorns, his covenant, how he does things. But I also have compassion and understanding. I understand that you cannot take my word for it. I understand that if you are taking medications that you think you need in order to stay alive, you have to sort that through with him. It's got to be between you and him. It cannot be something that I'm convincing you of because you are not meant to believe through me. And I fully support your path and your journey to understanding his will. You don't have to feel bad on my account that you're not doing things as I believe, but you do 100% have to receive from him what his will is. Please don't make the wicked decision of just going and deciding whatever it is that you want. If you hear that I'm speaking on the word of God, then go and ask him and he is capable of turning your heart. He's capable of ministering to you in a way that only he can do. He knows every fear, every issue, everything about you better than you know yourself. And so he is capable of ministering to you. And I am reminded of a recent example of a couple who was really on the fence about leaving the church that they had been going to, about this idea that I talk about, that tithing is associated with sacrifice. It is not something that we are supposed, that, that these counterfeit churches are supposed to be telling us to do. It's not something that we should be accepting. They've made that a business model and they return you to the law in order to make themselves rich and it's wrong. And they were having a really difficult time with this because they knew that they had been blessed when they started paying tithing. And they came to understand that the reason they had been blessed is because God was circumcising their hearts. He wanted, he was testing their hearts to see if they were actually going to circumcise for money because of the way that they had previously lived. And I thought, And I, you know, in my prayers for them, I, I really, I took it to God. I was concerned and took it to him. And I said, I don't know how you're going to convince them, but you're the only one who can within a week, within a week, they had clear spiritual eyes given only to them, given to them only by God. I cannot do that. The only thing that I can do, I can share my testimony. I can even speak on the word of God. And you know what? I know that God testifies to what I say because what I say is the truth and because I speak on his authority and not my own for his glory. But I have no power to drill that into your heart. The only way that you're going to know truth, the only way that you're going to know whether what I say is the truth is through him. I'm not upset about that. That's our design, and he gets all the glory. What I am doing is not for myself. I lived many years for myself. This rest of my life is not for me. I don't belong to me. So again, I ask you the question, have you healed simply because they told you you healed? Simply because they told you the cancer is no longer there? Does that mean that you've healed? I've watched people go from one issue to another and another and another because not only is the world and anything in it not capable of healing you, it's also not motivated to heal you if it could. God's the only one and he does not give grief willingly, but he does give it in order to teach us. I have not gotten sick like I used to get sick in the last three years. 
I have gotten sick and I've had him deal with me on my sin. I have gotten sick and I've had him tell me that he's bringing me in closer to deliver a message to me, to speak to me, to build me. And then it goes away. So again, you're not meant to believe through me. You're meant to believe through him. You're meant to worship him in truth and in the spirit, which means that you return to the truth and you study it for what he has said about healing. And then you return to him in prayer and fasting. And I have no doubt, no doubt whatsoever. That's exactly what that couple did. Within a week, he was causing them to throw out idols like a menstrual cloth. He's still stripping them of all of that. And he is perfectly capable of doing that with you. Don't make any decisions based on me. Again, you can't. That would be idolatry. That would be the very wrong decision to make. You make it based on his ministry, his truth, how he speaks with you, how he builds you, because only he is going to be able to heal you. Thank you for listening. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.